Welcome to Corona Pur. Uh, it's about truth and perception. And I give the word to Manetti that you can't see, but will soon hear. Hello, everyone. Here is Manetti. I'm uh, Dr. Pierre Eifler's uh, friend and one of his friends. And I'm trying to support him in um, adjusting in English the video he's done yesterday in German for you all English speaking people. And yesterday there had been uh, five questions or five main questions and the first one of these was um, how do the circumstances around coronavirus um, of the last week, which we have been living the last week, influence our daily life? Okay, first I want shortly to say for those who don't know me, I'm a medical practitioner, I'm a medical psychotherapist, I practice in Austria. I have a lot to do with fears, burnouts, people who are really exhausted. And about the question that Manetti had, it's a terrible input. Also here in Austria, there's incredible amounts of fear, uncertainty, there is uh, doubts. Nobody knows where that goes towards, where it comes from, what it is about. Also the political authorities leave a big gap of insecurity. And uh, as you all know, this is reducing terribly our resistance, our ability to respond to impacts, to inputs. It is something that the world will probably never be the same again. I have to be very clear from the beginning, it will be some of the things I have to express and observe is not the mainstream and uh, is also quite polarizing. After my opinion, this is nothing more than a very even harmless wave of the flu that comes every spring, starting normally in November, uh, then uh, rising up over January, having a peak January, February, slowing down in March and finally disappearing in the latest in April. We even have this year a quite mild winter here, that's why the flu came quite late. And uh, I correspond with many of my colleagues in the meantime who already are couraged and able enough to speak up in the internet. Uh, people from internship, pulmonologists in Germany, uh, there are people from hygienic institutes, virologists, uh, professors from Mainz who all have the same opinion. It's really shooting with big cannons to very, very little mice. So, uh, this was just the introduction and now we go right into the matter of fact. Uh -huh. What does it really mean to be tested uh, positive at coronavirus? A positive test of coronavirus means nothing else that this individual, this person, has strands or parts, particles of the so-called RNA, which is a uh, genetical information of that certain virus. It doesn't mean that it's uh, ill, it doesn't mean that it needs treatment, it doesn't mean that it's a deathly disease, it doesn't mean anything. It just is a screening test if you have this virus in you or if you don't. And the very um, difficult or also hard to understand matter of fact is that Obviously, that corona tests that were used until now are probably even in half of the cases, half, 50%, uh, so-called uh, not valid, which means they don't really show uh, that the person has a coronavirus, as they are so-called uh, they are positive, but they are not truly positive. So they show something else, but everybody thinks it's a coronavirus. The reason is, nevertheless, that they are not validated by any kind of uh, normal uh, level of normal validation that happens in the medical research. They were just put out on the market to make a lot of money. What I also want to add is uh, this coronavirus, it's a virus and the virus the basis of a virus is that it uh, changes every year its personality, its information. So it's not very surprising that it's a new virus because if it would be an old virus, it wouldn't even come. Uh, the virus is a kind of a 
a being that is somewhere in between life and not life. The official, uh, the official declaration isn't really clear there. After my opinion, it is alive. It just can't really reproduce, reproduce by itself without help. So it needs a host and it goes into the host, it goes into the cells of the host uh, and there the host reproduces, so to speak, through the uh, genetic uh, information, the virus. And so it has to be every year new. Coronaviruses is a family known since the 60s, not very uh, aggressive compared with others like influenza is maybe about 7 to 15 percent every year part of this uh, flu uh, wave. The other one, nearly 50 percent are not even really classified and known. There are about 100 tribes, so to speak, or breeds in that, in that whole, uh, in that whole uh, glass of uh, uh, flu-causing uh, viruses. There's rhinoviruses, there's uh, also a, a virus that everybody knows, it's the influenza virus, the classical one. So the corona is just around, let's say, 10 to 15 percent, not much more. And it's not very surprising that you find it, because you're supposed to find it. And you're supposed to find it about, in a maybe, as I said, 10 to 15 percent. So you already... Uh try to get into the, the issue of how much do these tests cost mm -hmm. and how high is their reliability. As I said before, I took it a little bit in advance, <coughs> the reliability seems not to be very high. It's a very, you have to imagine, it's a very, very complicated, very complex uh, kind of test, uh, which is called PCR, which basically takes the negative imprint of the genetic information, multiplies it, and then it is possible to test it. And it's very, very, very specific. So a test like this at the beginning after my information costed about 200 euros. If you multiply that with the numbers 